Well, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all that good stuff. Today, I am making a bunch of desserts for Thanksgiving. Obviously, you can make these any time of year, Christmas, the next holiday, any gathering, any get together. I was just gonna make all pies, and then I thought, why pigeonhole myself, okay? I do have a lot of pies, but I also have, let's just go down the list, apple, pecan, classics. You gotta have them on the table. And then a pecan slab, which I apparently tastes just like the topping of a pecan pie, and isn't that the best part? I'm also gonna throw together Ina Garden's brownie pudding. <laughs> Remember when I made that a couple years ago? It was a smash hit. Pumpkin pie is another staple. Protein buckeyes because you gotta please the masses. Strawberry pie is a new one. Someone sent me the recipe for that. Peanut butter pie, a classic in my family. And then of course, I had to bring in the banana pudding. Avelina wants it for her birthday and we're celebrating early this year. Her birthday's coming early. I'm gonna throw that together too. First and foremost, I'm going to, I'm putting together the crust. Homemade pie crust is the absolute cherry on top of whatever. It's the best, it's the ultimate. This is all about my life these days. I'm trying to just elevate every experience and pies is one of them. So most of the time when I make homemade pie crust, it's really simple, it really only calls for a few ingredients. Flour, salt, a little bit of sugar just to encourage browning on the crust and then butter and ice water, but everyone has that. And you should have all these ingredients anyway. Just throw it together. I know Pillsbury already bought dough makes it seem really convenient because it is and take the convenience if you need it. But if you have just a tiny bit of extra time, make your own pie crust. It's gonna make all the difference when people are gobbling down your pie. So for my, this pie crust, listen, all the recipes are pretty much the same, slightly different variations. For this particular one, it calls for one and a half cups of flour, one tablespoon of sugar, a little bit of salt, that's just to enhance the flavor, and then 10 tablespoons of butter. And I use really cold butter, the coldest you can get, if you wanna pop it in the freezer for a little bit, you don't want frozen butter. I don't even pop it in the freezer, but that's, people say that, okay? You just do what you can, when you can, and I don't have the time to pop it in the freezer. I cut my butter up into just little cubes here and then toss it in the flour mixture. A lot of times in the past, you've seen me make pie crust in the food processor, and that's really simple, very easy, no skill involved at all, although there's very little skill and effort involved in making it this way too. The process is very simple. I wanna make sure my pastry stays nice and cold, which means my butter stays nice and cold. So I'm just taking my fingertips and kind of like smooshing the butter in with the flour. This is gonna make a crumb. It's called cutting in the flour. And then I have my pastry blender. I'm just gonna go in and cut the butter in a little bit better. I was reading through some different pie crust recipes and the way that I do it in the food processor, way better than Pillsbury. I'm just gonna say that. If Pillsbury is a two, the food processor pie crust is an eight. This pie crust better be a 10 because the amount of effort I've put into making pie crusts this morning has been insane, especially while I'm holding a baby. Like trying to make pie crust with one hand with a fussy baby who wants to go to bed and also nurse and screaming. Enjoy the good old times, right? That's what they tell you. So at this point, I have some ice water, really cold water, and I'm gonna put in about a quarter cup. You can put in a couple tablespoons at a time, but I've been doing this all morning, and I feel like my dough needs more hydration than that, and so do I. Bottoms up. So at this point, I'm just going in with a fork to encourage uh, the water to mend with the flour. If I just went in with my hands right away, my hands would get all goopy with the water and it would just be a mess. So once that's kind of incorporated, I'm gonna turn it out onto my surface and I'm gonna take my bench scraper and cut the butter and flour in just slightly more. You want your butter to be like pea-sized pieces, but listen, according to Claire, we want a rustic appearance to this. Not her words, those are mine. Her words are more professional. Different variations in sizes means that we're going to get a flaky and and tender crust. And I don't know about you, but that's exactly what I'm looking for. The pie crust is actually my favorite part of a pie. I'm not a big pie eater, but I do like the crust. So maybe that's why homemade is so important to me. So this is still like a little bit too dry for my liking. 
Maybe not Claire's, but I'm gonna dump a little bit more water in there. And if you're wondering, yes, I was cursing her name this morning because she, it looks like she added two tablespoons of water and all morning I'm like, what? Struggling to get my pie dough together. We're not supposed to overwork this and I'm touching it little as possible because I, the warmth of my hands is really gonna heat everything up and I wanna keep everything nice and cold. So I'm just forming it into a square. This is the process. Roll it out ever so slightly, a little bit here, and then pack it together a little bit better. And I don't make the rules, I just follow them. So if you can see the different variations of the butter in here, the different sizes, it is different than making it in the food processor where everything is so ground up, it has that sandy-like texture. So this is apparently supposed to be better. So we're gonna give it a go. I know Thanksgiving isn't necessarily the time to try new recipes, but I feel like you can't really mess up a pie crust. So I just quartered it, and then I'm gonna slide each quadrant on top of itself, and oh, that was lovely. Kind of like when you're making a croissant, it just quadruples the flakiness of the dough, quadruples the butter layers in here, and it's just really nice. So once that's all together, I'm gonna pack it up and pack it in again. Pack it up, pack it in. See how lovely this is? Flaky and tender. At this point, I'm going to take some plastic wrap and ideally this should probably in the be in the form of a disc but I have a square right here and I feel like whatever see what it's crumbling hers was crumbling too listen I feel like all day my castle is crumbling I'm doing my best that's exactly what hers looked like so if mine comes out crappy I don't know man this is just how they taught me at Cordon Bleu. So I'm kind of forming it into a disc, a circular disc here, and to fill out, kind of like help hydrate the rest of that flour, I'm just gonna bang down on it and fill up all those spaces that's left in the plastic wrap. I should have six doughs in the fridge. This is the seventh because we're making a lot of pies today. I'm throwing my dough in the fridge for a couple hours just to set up. It'll be good in there for a couple of days or pop it in the freezer and it's good for a few months. I'm gonna tidy up the surface and then get ready to make the pecan pie slab. I'm starting to gather the ingredients and it's quite a process to make this dessert. As with anything, it'll be worth it in the end. I'm gonna throw like four, four and a half-ish cups onto a sheet pan just to toast these in the oven. They're pecans. One, two, three, four. Get your woman on the floor. Maybe a little bit more. I just eyeball it. You know, I watched Claire make this, and so I clicked on the link to get all the recipes. You gotta pay for them. I'm too cheap. So you know what I did? I followed her step-by-step -step instructions in the video. I zoomed in on a lot of the measuring cups, so I don't know if I got it right, but I think it would be close enough. Toss those in the oven. Let them toast until they're nice and fragrant and nutty. Next thing I'm gonna do is keep track of how much butter I use in this video. I'm already two boxes in. I'm gonna brown this butter on the stove top. It looked like she had about a cup and two tablespoons, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> My eye is pretty good. And to brown butter, literally all you do is just throw butter in a pot, medium, low heat, and just let it cook until it's nice and golden and rich. I'll show you what it looks like. The butter came to a boil, and I'm just mixing it a little bit. It's not brown yet. I'm just letting the rest of the water in the butter evaporate, and that's how we get brown butter. It smells a little nutty. It could be the pecans in the oven. It's also going to give us a really rich, like, caramelly flavor. Okay, I think it's good. I want brown butter, not burnt butter, and you can kind of see the bottom. Kind of, hold on, let me get it better. See that in there, that nice, rich amber color? I move the spatula up, so that is good to go. She added, ooh, now you can really see that color. She added an ice cube to it. Oh, ooh, look at that scientific reaction here. I guess I should have put it in a different bowl. <laughs> right, let me put it here so the cooking actually stops. There we go, beautiful. Get all that rich flavor in here. Yes, anything with brown butter is a labor of love. Now you can really see the color of this butter. Just delightful. I've made brown butter cookies before. Pecan cookies, I wanna cry. They were delightful. While the pecans are still toasting and I'm gonna let this cool down a little bit, I'm gonna roll out one of the pie crusts. Although this is not a pie. Did I tell you what we're making? Oh my gosh, we're this far into it. It is pecan slab pie. Essentially, it's the top 
layer of the pecan pie. Like that's the texture and taste of it. And that's the best part of a pecan pie. So here is my refrigerated pie crust. It's refrigerated. It seems nice and hydrated. I'm just going to try to roll this out a little bit of flour on my work surface. And then this is Claire's signature move here. She slaps down her pie dough, gives it a nice turn, make sure it doesn't stick, slaps it again. I've been brushing up on my Mine's cracking already. Listen, I told you I had a couple harsh runs making this crust, so let's all cross our fingers that this works out. I'm gonna roll it out large enough to cover this 13 by nine inch surface with about an inch overhang. Wish me luck, lady luck. So far so good, I do feel it sticking to the surface a little bit, so I'm gonna add some flour, and I'm gonna show you what this pastry dough looks like because the amount of butter chunks in here, I just can't even wait to eat it. It's gonna be so good. The pecans are done toasting. I'm just gonna let them cool off a little bit. I'm gonna put them right there. That's good. All right, you wanna see this? So marbly and delicious. I have my pan here, so I just wanna make sure I have about an inch of overhang for it to get that nice like crust on it, I guess. Breaking a little bit. Okay, time to boot, scoot, and boogie this thing into the pan. No need to grease the pan. This thing has 10 tablespoons of butter in it. I don't think it's gonna stick to anything. And I'm just gonna do my best to roll it out. Encourage it to slump inside. With the excess from one side, I could always add it to where I'm slacking a little bit. Listen, it's called a slab pie. I'm not Martha Stewart. This is not going to be magazine worthy, but it will be delicious. So keep your expectations there. Perfect. I can't remember if she did a blind bake on that or not. I threw it in my fridge just to keep it chilled while I make the filling. So I'm not gonna blind bake it. It's not in my notes and I'll, it's fine. So to the food processor, oh, this smells delightful. I'm going to add the brown butter and about a cup and a half, woo, nice and hot, of toasted almonds and one cup of Demerara sugar. I had to Google it, Turbano cane sugar. So I grabbed this in the USA, this is what they have. Apparently it's very similar. Hopefully it'll be good enough. I'm going to add one cup to this. You can use brown sugar or normal sugar. I'm sure it'll be fine. But I have a few recipes that call for this, I think. The chef that I am. Time to grind this up. Oh my word, this is amazing. It smells like Aunt Annie's pretzel. And I did already mess it up, if you were wondering. You're just supposed to ground the pecans and the sugar first and then add the butter, but I feel like it's all getting ground together. It'll be fine. Now I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of vanilla and two cold eggs. A one, a two. No shells. Jordan. And two tablespoons of flour. Zip that up. I mean, that's it? Oh, I could eat it with a spoon. Salmonella, I dare you. Ooh, that Demerara sugar needs to cook down a bit. So now I'm gonna make the topping for this. It's like a three-step process, but you know what? It better be worth it. So I'm gonna start out with one egg white. This is kind of the same process of making glazed pecans, like sugar pecans, you know. I've made those before. They're really simple to make in the oven. A little time consuming, but worth it. And great as like a hostess gift or something like that, or just a snack on during the holiday season. So to the one egg white, I'm going to add one quarter cup of the Demerara, and then just whisk it up until it's nice and frothy and kind of like pale in color. It kind of takes no time at all. I've been whisking for like 30 seconds and I'm almost there. It's all in the wrist, Happy Gilmore style. See that nice color? So to that, I'm going to add about, again, I couldn't really get her measurements. It looked like about three cups of pecans. I'm gonna give this a toss and see where it gets me. I'm gonna try to toss these around. I feel like I could add a few more pecans to that. So like some toasted, some frozen. We love them all. There'll be a nice blend in there and really it's just to cover the top. Now to assemble, I'm just, ooh, this got nice and gelatinous. I'm gonna pour the filling in here and then take the pecan topping. This looks nice, right? Should I add more pecans? I don't know, I feel like it's good. And then scatter them over top. Listen, if I want it to be fancy, maybe like one at a time, 
but that's not my style. So rustic it is. I'm gonna stick to that theme and just scatter them all across the top. Try to make an even layer. All right, perfectly delicious. I'm gonna throw this into the oven. 375 for about 30 minutes. Next up, I'm gonna throw together pumpkin pie, but this isn't your mama's average pumpkin pie. I've never made a pumpkin pie like this before. There isn't any evaporated milk in this, but it does call for, you guessed it, brown butter. I'm throwing five tablespoons into a pot to brown it. I have a lot of thoughts happening right now. I actually wanted to make the pumpkin pie last because Oh, what should I do? For it to completely set and not have cracks, you're just supposed to leave it in the oven with the oven door cracked. I might put the filling together and then set it aside because I also need to blind bake my crust for the pumpkin pie too and that takes like an hour. Okay, so I have my brown butter. I took it out of my pot because I didn't read my directions. So I'm putting it back in and I'm gonna throw in one third cup of honey and then I'm gonna throw it back on the stove just to warm it up. This is nice and cooked through. I'm just gonna set it aside, let it cool down a little bit and start on the filling. I also now realize I wanted to double this recipe. It's too late. Maybe, oh my gosh, I almost cracked the egg over there. Maybe I will later, I'll have the kids help me with that. That's part of the fun of the holidays, getting them involved, teaching them how to cook and stuff. Nobody saw that. Look, it's giving you a face. Hello. The recipe I had growing up was pretty traditional. It called for like evaporated milk and stuff and also an extra egg yolk. It just brings a little richness to it or have a custardy feel. So I'm just gonna whisk the eggs a little bit. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of brown sugar along with one can of pumpkin. Really good quality pumpkin. Libby's I've been seeing is the best. I don't know, I have this organic pumpkin from Thrive Market and I feel like it is always amazing. It smells very fresh. Now for the spices, cause I feel like this can make or break a pumpkin pie. I'm not a huge pumpkin pie fan, okay? Two teaspoons of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ginger, half a teaspoon of nutmeg, half a teaspoon of allspice. If you wanna use the pumpkin pie filling that I'm sure you have in your pantry, I'm sure it'll be great, but uh, just not as great as this. And then a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. Mix all of this together. The smell of this, through the roof, amazing. So to my warm mixture over here, I'm gonna add some heavy cream. Three quarters cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add it slowly because that mixture is hot. This is obviously cold. So I'm just gonna whisk it in so nothing curdles. Still warm to the touch and I'm gonna drizzle it into this mixture, just slowly and stirring uh, so I can temper the eggs so they don't cook and turn into scrambled eggs on me. Too slow. Like, listen, who has time for that, you know? And that is the filling. Super simple. And it's, oh my gosh, this smells amazing. All right, I'm gonna set this aside. While I have a minute, nothing is in the oven right now. So I'm gonna blind bake the crust for the pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna take a little bit of flour and just roll it out. Ooh, it's cracking already. Not very hydrated, Claire. All right, I got it rolled out. Now I'm just going to transfer it onto the pie dish. And then I just let it sink in. I'm never very good at crimping, but I do my best. I honestly think this crimping job turned out really well. Uh, a little more overlap would have been nice. Okay, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that crimp. It looks pretty. It doesn't always look that nice, but here we are. I'm actually pretty impressed with my skills here. And then I'm just gonna take tin foil because we have to blind bake this and I just put it around the outside of it. I'm gonna try not to ruin a beautiful crust work. And I just kind of overlap it. It's important to bake your pie crust in a pumpkin pie because you don't want like a gloopy pie crust. I'm gonna use rice. You can use pie weights if you're fancy and have those. You can use dried beans and stuff too, lentils, whatever. So I'm gonna throw this in the oven, 325 degrees for about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna move on to apple pie. Haven't made this, listen, I got this doohickey as a gift a long time ago. I don't really know how to use it. I tried to use it once and, oh, there we go. Ooh, I don't know what that does. I guess I should read the directions, but. Oh, okay, 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 okay. What do I need, three hands to work this contraption? Listen, you could just peel it. It's not sticking to my countertop. I don't, um. There, there, there. Am I supposed to stick the apple on here? I need a video tutorial. Oh, I think that's right. <sighs> Got it. All right, now I can shove the apple. Oh, nice. 
All right, that was a workout. Three pounds of apples. I'm making apple pie. Oh, I don't want to start there. I want to start. No. No. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Okay, I'm starting here. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to peel the apples. And while it's peeling, it also kind of cuts the apple. Is this a mistake? It's going to cut it pretty thin. And it's going to make it really easy for me. Oh, oh, it's not peeling it anymore. Oh boy. Hold on. We got a little jammed. Definitely a little learning curve here, but I got it. We'll make it work. You see those beautiful layers? Hey, listen, some people leave the peels on when they make their apple pie. It's a personal preference. Okay. So do you see this? Perfectly peeled apple. Drying. Mmm. So crisp. So tart. Since last time you had a Granny Smith apple. And the easiest way for me uh, to make when I make apple pie, which <laughs> hasn't been in many, many years, I just take the apple and I quarter it. Well, do I quarter it? Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to quarter it. I don't like biting into like a big chunk of apple in my apple pie. I just want it to kind of disintegrate and melt in my mouth. So I'm going to quarter it. My pieces are going to be yay big. And uh, how do I get the core off? I'm so glad I busted this thing out. It was so nice. I was a little disappointed that it kept some of the skin on, but it was kind of the shape of the apple's fault. So there's that. Cut it up. So I took my pie crust out of the oven and I'm just going to, the tinfoil isn't hot because that's how tinfoil works. I'm just gonna try to carefully take the rice out of here without spilling it. And I'm sad to report that I ruined the crust. Hey, success. I ruined the crust because I grabbed it. So I'm gonna, just going to try to, oh, there we go, maneuver it back. And then I'm going to throw this back into the oven, uncovered for another 20 minutes. Uncovered for another 20 minutes. I'm going to get the crust started for an apple pie. You need two, one for the bottom, one for the top. I may have rolled it out a little too much, but it'll be fine. I'm just going to transfer it on top of a pie plate. All right, a little overhang is good because this one needs a top to attach it to. So for the filling, I've seen a lot of recipes where some people cook the filling so it doesn't bake down while it's baking in the oven. I think these pieces of apple are a good enough size where I don't have to do that. But I am going to add a couple tablespoons of lemon juice, one cup of sugar, half a cup of flour, and then for spices, I'm just going to add two teaspoons of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Honestly, it doesn't feel like enough of anything, but I'm keeping it simple and classic. I'm gonna give this a mix and let the apples fully incorporate with that sugar. I may regret not peeling the apples completely, but you live and you learn. And that's it, super simple. And I'm just going to, Listen, I had the world's best apple pie one time and the way he made his filling, he like laid his apples out in single layers. It was so delightful. So I'm gonna try to recreate that. I remember when we had a pie bake off with one of our neighbors when we lived in Europe. Uh, they won, but their pie was so dang good and I should have gotten the recipe from them. I wonder if Alex still has their contact information. Anyway, the dough was miserable. I needed to add so much water. So there's my tip to you. Add like a cup of water. No, not a cup. Maybe half a cup. <laughs> I don't know. Mine was so dry. Maybe cut in the butter better. I will probably use the food processor next time. I'm just saying it was a labor of love that did not pay off for me anyway. Um, maybe Claire did it. A I'm going to have to rewatch her video or something. I feel like I did it exactly the same way she did it. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give it another try. Second time's a charm, that's what they say. This is the pumpkin pie filling. The blind bake was done, so I poured in the filling into the warm crust. Some people put it into a cooled crust, but I, who has time for that? And then I'm putting the lattice work on the apple pie. I think that ma this makes it, I don't know, look more homemade. It gives it more of a, like, ooh, professional feel, like more impressive. And who doesn't love a good lattice work on a pie, right? Super simple to do. I just ran out a little bit of dough. So I'm kind of piece working together the last piece here. And I think it turned out really well. Uh, when my family saw it, they were quite impressed. The pie was delicious if you needed to know that as if you had any reservations about it. And then 
To top it, I just do a little egg wash. It's an egg whipped up with just a little bit of water and then I'm topping it with some sugar. Into the oven, oh, and put it on a dish because there will be some spillage. 350 in the oven for an hour. I put foil over it after well, 30 minutes. Well, the next recipe is a strawberry pie, something like that. Someone sent me the recipe. They said it's a crowd pleaser, hits every time, it's a no bake. So that is a check off my list. I'm kind of over it right now. I still have to throw the apple pie in there. Pumpkin is finishing up. So obviously strawberries. It calls for a graham cracker crust. Listen, I could have made a graham cracker crust, but I just made all those pie crusts. The store was out of graham cracker crumbs. And in my mind, I was like, well, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I could have got graham crackers and crumbed them up in my food processor and made it. It's really simple. I think the graham cracker crust is just one and a half cups crushed graham crackers, one third cup white sugar, six tablespoons melted butter, and then you pat it into a pie dish. This is good enough for me. And then Avelina and I cut some strawberries. Oh my gosh, the smell of strawberries. Strawberries and sugar. You know what, I feel like this might be my new favorite pie and we haven't even assembled it. It does call for a few more things. Okay, hold up, before we go any further, this seems really easy to assemble. Jello, cornstarch, some sugar. I don't care about it right now. I have to show you this pumpkin pie. It looks like the best pie I've ever made in my entire life. I mean, if you don't think of Thanksgiving when you look at a pie like that, I just don't even know. I, of course, I'm going to take it out. It, wait, is it done? I don't know, hold on. I don't think it's done. It should be a, oh, it's hot. Oh, obviously, it's on the oven. It should be a little jiggly in the middle. I think that's a little too jiggly. I'm gonna let it cook for about 10 more minutes. Should be enough time for me to throw this jello mixture together. It really looks simple and it's nice to have a refreshing dessert, you know what I mean? Not super sweet. Well, I say that and I'm starting off with two cups of sugar. I mean like refreshing and more light than let's say pumpkin pie. So two cups of sugar and then two cups of water, two, eight tablespoons of cornstarch, and then a little dash of salt. And I'm just gonna mix this all together. Just let it come to a simmer consistently. So cook slowly until translucent and thick, stir constantly. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right. But you know how I do. I'm gonna throw the strawberries into this pie crust. It says to layer them. I don't know if I'm supposed to make this look pretty. I'm just gonna toss them in and call it a day. I don't know if I did too many. We did two um, containers of them. So like 32 ounces. Well, I'm gonna say that looks pretty good and I'm gonna snack on these. Jello pie yi, yi, in the sky. Yi, yi. It was a lot of nothing until something happened. It is nice and translucent and thick. I'm not sure how much of this you can see. Consistency of glue, deliciousness. So now I'm going to throw in one packet of the small box of strawberry jello. And if I didn't say this, this recipe, I think it's called Shoney's Strawberry Pie. And it's from Karen from Georgia. Woo! Any recipe with jello is good on me. That looks, oh, well, really the smell. It smells divine. Oh, nice. All right, so now that that's done. Yeah, I think I'm most excited about this one. <laughs> I'm gonna pour it over top. Ooh, I'm gonna try to do it slowly so it doesn't overflow. Just wanna fill in all the gaps. Oh my goodness gracious, it overflowed, but that's okay. Maybe I did too many strawberries. And I'm gonna throw this in the fridge to set. And then, ooh, there's so much. There's so much. I, so I'm gonna stop there because it's just overflowing everywhere. Set it in the fridge and then top it with like a Cool Whip, frozen whipped topping. All right, I'm gonna, I gotta taste some of this, you know. Ooh, yeah, that's delightful. It tastes like candy. I guess I need to put it on this pan. <laughs> Dripping everywhere. How are we gonna do this? Slide to the left, slide to the right. All right, it's got a little jiggle in the middle and I took it out of the oven. I shouldn't have because now it's gonna like concave there. But I just had to show you the right color in the oven. You couldn't really tell. Oh my heck. This is it. Best thing I've ever made. I'm calling it right now. I don't even like pumpkin pie. Why am I so impressed by this? Where's my phone? I gotta take a picture. To avoid cracking, you're supposed to put it in, I'm taking a picture for the gram. <laughs> you're supposed to put it in, uh, like leave your oven cracked. Ooh, so it comes to temperature nice and slow. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the next recipe I'm going to throw together is also a no-bake pie. It's peanut butter pie. 
You know that pie that Costco sells for $20? Is it 20? I would spend 30. It is so great. You can't, first of all, it's this big and you can't eat more than like a small slice. I mean, surely you can, but it is so rich and uh, I'm gonna recreate it. it is, this is an old family recipe. I couldn't find my family recipe. I know I shared it in a video like years and years ago. I don't know what, what video. <laughs> so I'm just going to um, go off of like a couple I saw on Pinterest and kind of do my own thing. So I'm going to use peanut butter, obviously. I have these three small containers that we bring to the beach house. I think these were like buy one, get one free and these, whatever, right? All of them are open. They need to be emptied. I only need one cup of peanut butter, powdered sugar, vanilla. I'm gonna try to do like a chocolate layer on the bottom, see how that goes, or maybe drizzle it on top. Who knows? Cream cheese, heavy whipping cream. Instead of heavy whipping cream and powdered sugar, maybe use, I saw other recipes have normal sugar and then they put in, oh, like uh, already whipped cream, which I wonder if this recipe has me whip it. Mm. I'm gonna throw my apple pie in the apple of mine eye. Okay, it does which is fine, you can use the container. I did buy an extra one, but I also have a lot of whipping cream, so I'm just gonna do it this way. And uh, let's get to filling this thing up, shall we? The best part about this is I have leftover mini Reese's cups from Trader Joe's, and that's just gonna make the perfect topping. Mmm, I guess I need a bowl, someone's here. Ooh. Who is it? Okay, ignore my bowl full of peanut butter. I just made buckeyes. Protein buckeyes? D don't worry, it's in the future, I'm in the past. What day is it? What time is it? What year is it? Nothing is real. I needed to wait for my cream cheese to soften, so I'm throwing in one block of cream cheese and one cup of peanut butter, and I'm gonna beat this together with a, some beaters until it's nice and smooth. Next, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of powdered sugar and a splash of vanilla extract. Oh my gosh, it smells good. And I'm gonna whip this up. Okay, this is looking really nice and smooth. Creamy and dreamy. And I think the last step is just whip in. I had a cup of heavy whipping cream. I just whipped it to stiff peaks here. Almost made it to butter. You can use the uh, Cool Whip if you want to do that. And then just fold it in. Okay, mix it until it's all combined and look how fluffy and creamy and dreamy this is. Oh my heck, okay, give me the pack roast. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do on the bottom? I think I saw someone do the magic shell, but I have some Ghirardelli chocolate that I'm just gonna squeeze here. I'm gonna coat the bottom. I think this is gonna, you know, take it over the top. Give it that Reese's peanut butter cup feel. Of course, we'll probably leave this when we're serving too and people can drizzle it over top. Just gonna spread that all over the bottom. Good, good, good. And then pour my mixture right on top. I'm telling you, this is going to be a family staple and it's so simple to throw together and the best part, it's no bake. Throw this in your fridge to set. I don't know, I'm doing it for a day. <laughs> I assume it only takes a, a few hours, several hours. Listen, my next go, I'm gonna try to find a copycat Costco pie recipe. Woo, because I think the Costco pie has more chocolate in it. Anyway, this was delightful, it was easy. I did forget to top it with all those Reese's. Bonus for me, I get to eat the Reese's, but um, you know how Thanksgiving is. It's just busy and there's a ton of people and I was just putting the desserts out and I totally forgot. So there's that, but it was still good and a staple, a Thanksgiving staple. You know what I would change? The crust, maybe buy an Oreo crust or make your own Oreo crust instead of graham cracker crumbs. Just get Oreos, crumb them up. Fantastic. I should have done that actually, but I didn't have Oreos. Oh my, my gosh, this is gonna give the Costco pie a run for its money. I don't know if it's made to do this, but I took the insert and just inverted it so I can throw it in my fridge and nothing will get on top of it. Seems like it was made to do this, but I don't know. I've never seen anyone else do it. Feeling pretty inventive right now, not gonna lie. All right, into the fridge. Ooh! All right, I think the apple pie is done. I've been trying to clean up in between so I don't have like a massive mess to be left at the end. I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I don't know how to tell if an apple pie is done, but she's beauty and she's grace. Happy about that. I don't think I've ever made such a beautiful pie. And look at that crust. What? I did cover it with tin foil when it had about 30 minutes left. Beautiful. But now I'm going to move on to Ina Garden's brownie pudding. I just remember this being so delicious. 
and definitely a holiday treat, not something I would make every day. I mean, <coughs> we do have brownie Friday once a week, so it could happen, but it's like one of those recipes where it's a lot of to do, so that's why I say that. I need to melt this. My pie, my pumpkin pie is in my microwave because I set it as an oven temperature to let it come to temperature a little faster and it's still cracked. Sad to report, but you know what? It still looks great. I'll live. For Ina Garden's pudding. Yeah. What do I want to eat? Oh, pretty simple. Calls for a vanilla bean. <laughs> I'm just going to use vanilla paste. Does call for some liqueur. I do remember that last time. Uh, I don't care, I don't have it, I didn't buy it. I do have cocoa powder, which it calls for. And then, uh, surprisingly, it doesn't call for the espresso powder, which is usually in most of her like chocolate cake-ish recipes, so I'm just gonna throw it in. I need a bowl. And this one starts with, star of the show, sugar, two cups. I'm gonna whip it together with four eggs, and I'm just gonna beat it up. Hey, honey, how are you? Was I not filming any of that? I'm the worst. Listen, cocoa powder, high quality. I've got the Nestle, the good stuff over here. Uh, three quarters of a cup of that. And then I threw in a half a cup of flour. I'm gonna do about a teaspoon of vanilla paste. She calls for something crazy. I don't have that in my garden. If you do, you go ahead and use that. And then I'm gonna throw in some espresso powder. It just really richens that chocolatey flavor. Hers calls for a tablespoon of liqueur. Oh, I still got the butter. I'm thinking like, what is the liquid in here? I'm just gonna mix this together until it's combined. I mean, this looks like a pudding I could eat with a spoon. Then I'm just gonna drizzle in the butter here. Is this the right thing to do? I don't know. All right, that looks delightful. I'm gonna get a pan to put it in. I'm just gonna pour it into an oval pan and let it cook for one hour at 325 degrees. Next up, pecan pie. I gotta do it, it's a staple. It's not Thanksgiving without a proper pecan pie, pumpkin pie, apple. Those are Thanksgiving staples. You can't host one without them or without having someone bring them. And homemade, it has to be homemade. I mean, I say that, but I'm pretty sure last year we, we had it from the store because convenience. And also, I went to Costco the other day. They had an apple pie for, I wanna say $13. The amount of money I spent on ingredients to make my own apple pie, probably more than $13. The butter alone, you know? But does it taste better? Mm, debatable. <laughs> I love my pecan pie and people love it. They expect it. They expect it on the Thanksgiving table. So I aim to please, I'm gonna throw it together, but first I have to look up the recipe. I thought about looking for a different recipe for this one, but you know what? Sometimes you just don't wanna mess up a classic, you know? It's such a crowd pleaser. I've had plenty of people rave about it, so I'm sticking with it. Starts out with one cup of sugar, three tablespoons of brown sugar. I don't know why I don't remember this. I feel like I made it early this year because I did not make it last year, I told you. Because I like had a newborn baby, it's a lot. Throwing in a little bit of salt. What I'm getting at is I don't make this often, but when I do, oh boy, it is a good time. Oh my gosh, my nails! All right, one cup of le corn sirip. I like how it has a measure on the bottle so I don't have to like ruin my measuring cup. <laughs> Just a little bit more, that should do us. I think this is the only reason I buy corn syrup. Oh, this and rum balls. Delicious. I hate that my phone turns off every four seconds. Oh, another stick of butter. Add it to your tally. We, we only actually need one third cup of butter and it needs to be melted. So I'm gonna melt that right quick. While that's melting, I'm gonna mix in three eggs. Really, this recipe comes together in no time and no skill involved at all. My favorite kind of recipe. I'm doing some more vanilla paste. I get this at Trader Joe's. It is the best price at Trader Joe's. And I always get it, I feel like they only carry it during the holidays, but that's the only reason I would use it anyway because it is pricey, but it's the holidays. What am I gonna do, not use it? All right, I feel like I need to just whisk this together a little bit. And then I'll drizzle in the butter. Oh my gosh, we're already at the pecan pie part. I mean the pecan. Worst part about this recipe is that I have to roll out another pie crust. So one cup of pecans. I do a 
heaping, heaping cup. But you do have to chop it. And I think Pioneer Woman says smaller pieces are better. I don't know. I just give it a really nice chop. I don't leave a lot of bigger pieces. One year I made a huge mistake and I made like chocolate pecan pie. Don't do it. Stick with the classics. They're classics for a reason, you know what I mean? Pinterest was like, better than pecan pie. I was like, no it's not. You know what's annoying about this? Aside from like the chocolate smearing all over my counter, it's fine. Uh, the fact that I just washed this, ugh, wasted my time. Is I thought this was a good one. This looks like it's gonna crumble apart too. Oh, it's falling apart. Hashtag can relate. This crust, I tell you, oh my heck, you guys, <laughs> I just added a ton of water too. I'm crushing it up. Listen, Claire was like, it'll be tender and flaky. This pr crust was neither tender nor flaky, but it was crusty and crumbly. I'm just kidding. It actually wasn't that bad. It tasted delicious. With the pumpkin pie, I think it was overbaked a little bit. All the blind baking, I don't think that was quite necessary. I don't think my dad does that. My dad, I'll talk about it in the um, Thanksgiving video with the cook with me, but he makes the best pies. Apparently, my family loves them. They were eating these and just everyone, everyone loved my dad's. I should share. I feel like, have I shared his recipe? I don't think so. It's a secret family recipe. He won't give it to me. He probably will. I, I won't share it though. <laughs> okay, pie crust done. Pie crust number 20 today. I think I'm gonna cut up some more pecans. That just doesn't seem like enough for me. I think this pie dish is a little bigger than a typical pie dish. I don't know, eight, 10, 12, how big are they? This one seems like a really deep dish too. So I'm just gonna drop those in. Enough to coat the bottom and then some is what I always say. And then I'm gonna throw the liquid mixture on top and the pecans will kind of float to the top and be the topping, but this is just how it's assembled. That looks, ooh, drool worthy. I'm gonna throw this in the oven with foil over it for 30 minutes at 325. And then I'm gonna take the foil off and cook it again for about 30 minutes, but it says up to 50. Oh, I forgot about that. So I'm gonna start off making the protein Buckeyes. To me, they taste exactly the same as a normal Buckeye, so it's a really simple swap to make them a little more healthy for you. If you're, you know, if you're going to eat a dessert and you wanna make it high protein and you don't wanna feel like garbage and eat a ton of sugar, maybe this will be the perfect solution for you. I just think it's nice to have a variety, especially when you're hosting a ton of people because you know, different people live different lifestyles. So I'm starting off with two cups of peanut butter. You can half the recipe, I'm doubling it. It comes up to about 516 grams of peanut butter. I'm just using my scale because I really don't feel like washing any more measuring cups. I'm gonna throw in four tablespoons of honey. I should have sprayed that so it came out nicer, but ah, whatever. I'm gonna throw in a little splash of vanilla and then 128 grams of vanilla protein powder. This is the brand I have. And that pretty much replaces the powdered sugar. Right? That's a crazy swap. So I'm just gonna mix it up and it's literally that simple. Obviously, Buckeyes are a labor of love. After you roll them into balls and freeze them, you have to like dip them. So if you ever, you know, get Buckeyes as a gift, just know. It took them a really long time to make it. But I've got all night and hopefully my helpers will come out because Avelina Express, she wants to make another pumpkin pie with me. So I think we'll be in here cooking all night long. All night long, all night, Lionel Richie style. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can just eat this as a snack and it is delightful. These protein Buckeyes, when I tell you they were a hit, smash hit, Easy to grab, that's what people like. You know, with a pie, you gotta get a plate, you gotta get a fork, you gotta slice it, and then, you know, add some toppings, whatever. These Buckeyes, you walk by the dessert table, mm, I guess I'll grab one, pop it in your mouth, done. And that is the magic of Thanksgiving, right? So I think in the future I'll make more of these, but they are, a uh, well, I say that, are they more time consuming? Not really, kind of. I guess, I don't know, it depends. Because it does take a, a lot of time and energy to make a pie. 
this takes time and energy too. So it's just pick your poison. Which one do you want to have? These were fantastic. I will make these again. I've made them in the past just on like a normal average every day just for a treat for the kids. And you know, it's a treat that you can kind of feel good about because it's got protein powder in it. Be careful when you're picking out protein powder too, by the way, because they are not all created equal. The kind that I showed you, I feel like is one of the best that I found. So I forgot the um, brand, but I found it at Target. It was fantastic. Wolfgang is helping me put the chocolate on the Buckeyes. I'm just kidding. Uh, While well, he is there, but he was eating one and Eleanor was helping me dip them. I don't know where all my toothpicks, not toothpicks, whatever these things are called. The Oh, they are toothpicks. Okay. I don't know where they all went, but we found some cupcake toppers and just broke them off. I think we're actually using the cupcake topper. It's like from Easter or something. Doesn't matter. Just use what you have. Even use a fork if you want to do that. Um, you can submerge them all the way, but we just do it halfway. I think that's the classic look of a Buckeye. Plus, you save a little bit of chocolate that way. And here is the apple pie. Oh, my God. Round of applause. I mean, this thing is just so impressive with a little bit of Turbano sugar on top. Mmm. Somebody call the Food Network. This is magazine worthy. For sure, I would win a pie eating contest at the State Fair. I'm going to have to enter next year. Okay, so the color of the top of this isn't the greatest. I don't know. I think I, I just, my egg was too large or something. I had too much egg white on there, but that's what that is. Color, nonetheless, I'm sure it's going to taste amazing. I just took it out of the pan. It slid out really easy because it kind of shrunk just a bit, just like the perfect amount. And so I just plopped it out and plopped it on a serving board if that's what you want to do. It just makes it look a little nicer and it definitely holds its shape. The brownie pudding is out of the oven and uh, it slumped down a little bit, but that's okay. We'll turn it this way and you're none the wiser. A rose by any other name, I'm pretty sure this is going to be a delightful it's like crusty on the top but once you crack into it oh the creamy goodness is waiting for us on the inside serve with some ice cream or whatever i just like to eat it alone really what we did last year or two years ago i think was we left a spoon in here and kept it in the fridge whatever was left over from thanksgiving and just took a bite mm, every time we opened the fridge it was delightful did i show you the finished pumpkin pie yeah, so it definitely got cracks in it. That's okay. Um, it, I just put the baby to bed, so I am going to get with Avelina and maybe make a different recipe. This is Claire's recipe, and I'm going to, I think I'm going to make Joshua Weissman's recipe. I've heard it's really good, too. This looks all unassuming for now. It's the peanut butter pie, but once I serve it, I'm going to sprinkle on those mini peanut butter cups and drizzle some chocolate over it. It's going to be amazing. These Buckeyes look incredible. I just took them out of the fridge and put them on this tray. I think this is a great option to have if you're wanting something with that's a little healthier, a little more protein, but still a lovely treat. This strawberry pie is not much for the eye, and I'm not even sure it's set. It's a little slimy. I gotta let it set a little bit more, but I have high hopes for this puppy. This pumpkin pie, obviously a classic. You can't do a holiday without it. I think I cooked it at a lower temperature. I'm probably gonna throw it back in the oven. I'm not really sure it's done. It, it kind of looks done, but I'm most excited about this, mostly because I love pumpkin pie. I mean, what is this? Pecan pie, pecans. You said pumpkin pie like twice. <laughs> it's late, I'm ready for bed. Okay, so we did end up making the uh, Joshua Weissman pumpkin pie. So he makes his own, of course, pumpkin puree and uh, sweetened condensed milk from scratch. Yeah, I didn't do that. But it is just one can of pumpkin puree, one can of sweetened condensed milk, two eggs plus one egg yolk. That's how my dad does it too. And then he adds one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon ground ginger, quarter teaspoon ground cloves, two teaspoons vanilla extract, half a teaspoon sea salt, quarter teaspoon ground nutmeg and then of course for serving all that good stuff um the way that you cook it in the he's the one who when you cook the you know pie crust he lets it cool and then he cooks the entire thing hold on 325 degrees for one hour and that's about right and i opened this one this one looked like a dream oh my heck we did it i made all of these desserts there's still one more that i need to make and then of course the uh banana cream, whatever, the banana pudding. I, I will make that, it's just not out right now, so hopefully I added it. But um, I think there's something for everyone here. I hope you got some inspiration for the desserts you plan on making. I'm trying to slouch down to be in frame. Happy Thanksgiving, I'll see you next time, bye.